for us, adventure means access. It means being able to point the bike in the direction you want to go and ride confidently and safely regardless of the terrain. It means you're going to load it up and head away for days or weeks on end. It means the terrain is going to get rough, and while the bike may be capable of going over it, so do you. G'day, welcome to uh, to our review of the Royal Enfield Himalayan. We um, we just got back from a 2,500 mile ride. We went right around Arizona. We went where did we go? We went Arizona, Utah, and Colorado, and New Mexico. So we kind of we hit hit it all. Four states. Four. Yeah, it was it was epic. So. Um, I guess what we did is we, we decided to, um, during the lockdown, COVID-19, we, Deck and I sat around the kitchen table there for a long time and we talked about, you know, what, what the virtues of a, of a good adventure bike would be. And we kind of, like, talked about which ones we thought would be, you know, the most epic adventure bikes. And, you know, frankly, I've always loved the... BMW GS, you know, and we were kind of like all psyched on that whole path. Remember, we were talking about the the big twelve hundreds, and and then we yeah. saw that that what was it? Is it this? It's the eight hundred or the seven right. seven hundred? Naturally, you would gravitate towards the BMWs, you know, as uh, if you're looking for an adventure. They they seem to be the bikes that you would you know would would want to take on an adventure. But of course, as we'll talk about later, <laughs> probably uh, not the bike that would have suited us for our adventure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we decided to uh, to to do a bit of investigation on the different bikes. So. Our initial plan was to look at some second-hand bikes, and I think you know one of the things that we wanted to do was to have two of the same thing because if we're going to go on a big trip, and you know, and this is like the precursor to some even bigger trips, we wanted to um, make sure that we, you know, we didn't have to carry two different sets of spares for everything that for two different bikes, and you know, more so with a with a with a second-hand or a pre-owned motorcycle is that you know you're expecting to have maybe mechanical challenges so therefore it makes sense to have two of the same and carry the the standard stuff that could go wrong yeah exactly and and you know when i was all i was all for the klr you know i was all about that klr i mean that thing is as simple as it gets it's kind of big it's got plenty of power uh for its size you know that they say that they get down the highway at 70 miles an hour and and all the rest of it but you know a, a, a good second hand KLR is still 5 grand or so exactly you know me I'm a sport bike guy I ride a CBR 1000 so I was all about the CC's that was it for me I need I need CC's if I'm going to uh, load up a bike and and you know travel for the distance we were travelling I was, I was looking at the CC's that was my thing you know so yeah, yeah. Yeah, look, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not so much about the CCs. I'm more about the um, being able to control the thing and not freak out, you know, because the one thing that I know, because I've got uh, a Harley uh, Road King, you know, and that thing's 800 pounds of just like torment if if it goes wrong. And I, I've dropped it. I didn't drop it. I, I lost balance once. <laughs> And lost balance that's a good line that yeah like that. and i rolled it on the side 
and it was on you know up in bisbee arizona you know you go up the top of that hill there and i got way the top up this hill and that was a dead end so i had to turn around and then this car came whizzing down a driveway and scared the living shit out of me and at that time i just lost my balance and the thing rolled over and it rolled on the downhill side of the street when it was steep so getting that thing back up was was a nightmare so it took me every bit of strength i had to just to get it stood up again so yeah i'm i was all i was a bit more nervous about that to be honest well you know to that point though based on what we actually the terrain we covered you probably we would have had the same challenges with a big bmw yeah i mean if some of the terrain that we covered and obviously we had to pick the bike up um it had we'd have a similar situation if it was a big 1200 or an 800 oh, fully loaded i can't even begin <laughs> to tell you how horrible that would have been but um yeah it was so we you know we i guess so we talked about pretty much everything you know i i guess if you look at our options there as we were sort of narrowing down the search you know we we sort of i guess you could say we ruled out the big BMWs because frankly you know they're too expensive and they're too big and heavy and if you drop one you know you're going to do a shitload of damage to it yeah. and it's going to cost you a fortune to put it back together again um and if you don't bust it up too badly even scratching up those um you know those those cows or whatever you call you know the plastic oh, so you just you know yeah. i mean god knows how much that cost to to fix um i i guess the the ktms were also in the running in the running but yeah. you know i think you know we kind of ruled those out simply because the smaller one didn't look like it would be sort of like the the highway one you want plus you know i'm talking like the 390 or the um even the, the the slightly bigger one but again that thing you know you, by the time you put the panniers and load it up and everything else and you know, you're still talking 15 16000 dollars before Absolutely. you you walk out the the store yeah so it it struck me and i remember you know declan and i we sort of um we're involved in moto gp so we go to austin every year and we love going to that uh, what's it called that you know that bike show the custom bike show yeah that's a highlight of that weekend isn't it it's oh my god cool. i love it yeah. all those bikes so we 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 met and we actually hosted the royal enfield guys at the moto gp one year and i remember they launched that himalayan you know the yeah i remember back in 2016 i think it was that yeah. came out in india but it only just came out here a couple of years ago yeah i remember looking out the hotel window we were staying and there was a himalayan at the lights and i'm thinking what what is that that yeah. is so unique looking and i remember thinking wow i that is a cool motorcycle and that was the first time i laid eyes yeah and the himalayan was in was in austin texas and, and so they cool looking aren't they oh it it cut my it's got that kind of yes. like real retro look so real cool Anyway, so we contacted the guys at um Royal Enfield and said, "Look, you know, we want to do a long-term test on these um Himalayans, you know, can you sort something out for us?" And and you know, they were fabulous and they they did and you know, before you know it a couple of these things turned up in the driveway and and then we set about pulling them apart. Now, the, I guess I should backtrack and say the reason why we picked them was if you're going to buy one and and you know I should in full disclosure I I bought one I I loved it that much I bought it like Which it was says fixed volumes yeah yes. um so I'm an owner now you know of of this bike but what we did is we said right we're going to put every little farkle on this thing that we can possibly throw at it and see how much money you can spend on it and you know the bikes are like 5700 at the dealership plus title and tax and whatever else so you probably you're going to be in it for 6 and a bit thousand whatever we then put so what did we do so we put the 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 luggage carriers or the panniers on it we did the panniers the mounting brackets we did the um the uh handlebar protectors the uh yeah we did that um i put a 
I put that Powertronic ECU upgrade online, so it's got two maps on it. Now, I'm, I'm a f- bigger, fatter bastard than you are, so <laughs> I need probably a bit more power just to sort of stay up with you, but the... Um, I don't know about the whole Powertronic thing. You know, to me, it's sort of the jury's out because it seemed to rip along pretty well as it was anyway. Um, but it, anyway, I did it. It was like 350 bucks. Um, we put crash bars on it. Crash bars. Um, and, the, and we needed those things for sure. They paid off for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And we put some of those extra little lights on the thing just so that people would see us coming. Um, we put... What else did we put on there? Oh, I installed that um, aftermarket, you know, the accessory power. Now, frankly, yeah. this thing should come with accessory power switches, on, you know, like outlets on it. Mm. You know, that's kind of like a that would be a nice missing. Feature. But yeah. we we put that on it, and I got it from uh, SRC Moto, I think. And all of these accessories, if you look down on the uh, in the comments section, you're going to see links to everything that we put on the bikes, and we'll actually give you a budget of everything we spent on them. More often than not, we heard the story of fellow riders on these bigger, better bikes that were reluctant to take them where we ventured, because the bikes exceeded their abilities in those environments. 